Hello! Welcome to the Math 135 video for approximating square roots using derivatives. The intensity of this video is medium. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objective for this video is, by the end of this video, you should be able to approximate the square root of 50 without a calculator. Our main motivation is to answer the question, what is the derivative useful for? So we're going to spend a lot of time in this course computing derivatives and doing various things with them, and we want to know why do we actually care about derivatives. So the big answer to this is that we can use it to approximate functions by tangent lines. And while that doesn't seem very useful, uh, it actually turns out to be quite powerful and quite, quite useful. So we're going to give an example right here of what we can do with square root functions. So the application we have in mind is approximately what is the square root of 103? Now I want you to take a moment to think about this. If someone asked you um, what is the square root of 103, what would you answer them if you didn't have a calculator? What would be an approximate answer you could give? Now it's kind of tricky and maybe it seems like it's maybe a little bit more than the square root of, 10, of 100. So maybe it's a little bit more than 10. Now that's a reasonable answer, and we're going to develop a little bit more how to precisely see that it's a little bit more than 10. And what does a little bit mean in this context? So let's take a look at the picture of what's happening. If here's the square root function, then we have a value of the square root function that we know. We know what the square root function does at 100. And when it comes to 103, it's a little bit harder it's not so easy for me to think about what exactly is the square root of 103 without, say, like plugging it into a calculator. But even then, you come up with the question, how does your calculator compute it? So let's see a way that we can compute it without that. So our first observation is that computing a tangent line is simple from the point of view of computations. You can compute a tangent line without using a calculator. Now our strategy is we're going to plug in 103, not into the square root function, but into the tangent line of the square root function. So if you plug in 103 into the tangent line, you're hopefully gonna get a value that's close to the actual value of square root 103. Now, what does this actually look like in a picture? I think that explains most of it. So here's our square root function. We've hopefully computed the tangent line, and then when you plug in x equals 103, this is the actual height, the actual value of square root 103. But instead, we're going to plug in 103 into the tangent line. And hopefully this will be much easier to compute than this thing, which we don't actually know how to compute. So the trade-off is this is more precise, but hard to compute. This is less precise, but easier to compute. So formally, this is called linear approximation. We're approximating something by a line. And formally, this is in section 3.10 of the textbook, but we're introducing it now because we want you to have an idea of one thing that you can use uh, tangent lines for. So our strategy is first compute the slope of the tangent line using derivatives. The second observation is that the tangent line will go through 110. And now here's the thing that's very, very useful for us. We know that the tangent line, we want the tangent line at 103. So to compute what that value is, instead of trying to figure out the y-intercept and all that stuff, we think about how much does the, do our x values run and how much will our tangent line rise? So the slope is rise over run. So there are three units between 100 and 103. So then our tangent line will rise 3m units. Put another way, the tangent line will be at 10 plus 3 times the slope at 103. Again, I think a picture is helpful here. So we're going to know the value of our tangent line at 110. And then we're going to have three units of rise, run, rise, run, rise, run. So now our main goal is to figure out what this slope is. So 
So if f of x is the square root function, the derivative is 1 over 2 root x. We'll see this a little bit later in the course, but for now take it for granted. And if you plug in 100 at that derivative, it's 1 over 20. Again, you can do this without a calculator because it only involves 1 over the square root of 100, which we know. Great, so we figured out the derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line. So now to figure out what the tangent line um, gives as a value, if you plug in x equals 103, well, we already know that it's going to be 10 plus 3 times this slope. The slope is 1 over 20. So in total, the, the tangent line will output 10.15. So to put this all together, an approximate value of the square root of 103 is 10.15, according to the tangent line. Now, if we were to, instead of uh, going to 103, we wanted to go to 104, how would this change? Well, we would be running 4 units and rising 4m. So we'd have to modify this part, and it would be 4 over 20. What approximation does this give us for the square root of 81? Which we already know to be 9, but let's just see what does this approximation tell us. So instead, this time we're going backwards 19 units, and we're going to have to subtract off 19 slopes. And if you do this, you'll end up with 9.05. So our approximation isn't perfect. It's off by 0.5. But it still did a pretty reasonable job. The square root of 81 is indeed approximately 9.05. But now a little bit of a warning. You can already see that there's a bit of an error here. So if you want to compute approximations, you should choose a value as close as possible to something you know. For example, to estimate the square root of 103, we used the square root of 100. What would you use to approximate the square root of 50? I'll let you think about that. Now let's have some exercises. I want you to approximate the square root of 50 in two ways. The first way is by using the tangent line at x equals 100, like we just did in this video. And the second way is to use a tangent line at an x value that's closer to 50. Compare the two answers you get. Second, I want you to approximate the square root of 0 using the tangent line that we used in this video. So is it close to the true answer? This will tell you how bad things that are far away from 100 uh, actually are. And then finally, I want you to approximate the cube root of 10. So think of something whose cube root that, is, that you know and whose value is close to 10. And let's end with some reflections. If you only had a simple calculator with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, how would you compute the square root of 103 to within three decimal points of accuracy? And how does a calculator actually compute the square root of 103? How does it work? Thank you very much, and have a great day.